From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. There are some things that we are going to be sharing with you today that are absolutely heart moving and boggles my mind. This first one, Jerusalem attack shakes Israel. I could not believe what they did in Israel. I'll talk about it at length. And then cheers for synagogue killing can't be forgotten. Oh, not only did they do something horrific, but people cheered about it. And then going on, Washington National Cathedral to hold Friday Muslim prayers. My word, it's in a Christian cathedral. And certainly Jack will have a lot to say about that too. But before we get into the program today, we've been reminiscing a little bit at home about some of the wonderful things that we have experienced. And uh, I couldn't help but think about uh, one of the huge rallies that we had. And uh, I love children. They would come up so freely, you know, are you Rexella? And I say, yes, I am, honey. This one little girl I brought to Jack's attention this week said, uh, are you Rexella? And I said, yes, honey, I am. She said, where's your daddy? <laughs> oh, I like that one. <laughs> oh, brother. Okay, I'm going to let you have it now, right. honey. Oh, I've been in the ministry for many, many years, and you'll wonder why I look so good. It's because she, my sweetheart, gives me a lot of loving care. And ladies, <laughs> she looks so good because I buy her a lot of loving care. Explain that one to your husband, will you? <laughs> Well, I'm awfully glad it's something that I can purchase. <laughs> well, you know, friends, our hearts. I'm going to get back to the headline. Our hearts were so saddened and sorrowful to learn about the vicious attack which took place in Israel. It's something I think you'll agree with. I'll never, never forget. Uh, take a look, please. Here you see something. Islam rising, the never-ending jihad against the Jews, and Israel. Jerusalem attack shakes Israel. Five die in Palestinian assault on the synagogues. Oh, my. And then U.S. rabbis killed in the attacks, of course. The two Palestinians with a gun and axe went in, and they performed this terrible act. U.S. rabbis among five dead in the attack. There you see they're carrying them. And then jihad in Jerusalem. The Palestinians can't murder their way to a self-governing state. And uh, here you see someone, Pope Benedict the uh, 16th. And he had something to say about Islam. And my, oh, my, I'm going to ask Jack. He certainly paid for it. Islam does not fit in with Western civilization. This perceptive insight is something that Europe is just beginning to realize and America yet to find out. Islam's propensity to live by the power of the sword must be moderated. And the Pope was certainly very, very good in, in seeing that ahead of time. But Jack, he was right, and he's paying for it right now, isn't he? Pope Benedict XVI has a fatwa on him by the Muslims to kill him. And that's why he's in a little monastery now in... Rome. And he's promised not to say anything because this new pope has gone the opposite direction. They're not going to put a fatwa on him because they said, and I can document this, and I will in a couple of weeks from now thoroughly, if you will get on your podium and say to the world, we are a religion of peace, we'll be kind to you. We'll stand behind you. And he did it. God forgive him. You'll see why as we progress. Jack, you know, there's something that really, really puzzles me. I know you must be puzzled. Why? Why is the Jews so hated? I can't figure it out. And yet I'm sure the Bible reveals very, very much along that line. What does the Bible say about the hatred for the Jew? First of all, Jesus predicted this would be so. In Matthew 24, verse 9, he said, 
to the Jews, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And 1 Chronicles 21.1 says, Satan, that old slimy serpent, stood against Israel. Anytime they're hated, it's because of Satan's crowd. And I'm sorry for what these men suffered. And it's sad how the people rejoiced and just danced around the streets because these four rabbis were murdered and put to death. We're going to have more to say about that in a minute, Rexella. Yes, Jack, certainly. But something else that really puzzles me. You know, you can be hated and uh, people not like you, but they don't have to be vicious against you like we saw there in Jerusalem, going into a synagogue. Why the vicious act, Jack? It's not only the Jews. They're killing everybody. You know, there are 300 churches in Iraq that were Christian entities. And just a few months ago, they had eliminated 299 of these Christian churches and killed hundreds of believers in Jesus. They had one church left. These are the Chaldeans. God help these dear people. And the vicar said, I'll stay. They marched into the church and killed all the children. And he said, this is it. They fled. 300 churches in the Chaldeans have been there from the beginning, the earliest Christians. Now it's finished. This is a hateful group. Now, I think Romans 3, verses 13 to 17 pictures who they are. It says their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues, they've used the seat. The poison of snakes is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. And the way of peace have they not known. And they'll never know it, as you're going to see further in the program. Mm, Jack, yes. Again, my mind is absolutely boggled with what has happened over there in a well-known journalist. And Nolan Finley, my, what a great uh, journalist he is, wrote a very enlightening article about the attack. I'd like for you to see this, please. Cheers for synagogue killing can't be forgotten. Now, he's not only saying that the act can't be forgotten, but the way they cheered about it can't be forgotten. And here you see the article, the acts were horrific enough. Four rabbis and a police officer hacked to death with meat axes while worshiping in a Jerusalem synagogue. It doesn't even get more disgusting than that until you see the photographs of Palestinians lining the streets, waving axes and gleefully cheering the slaughter. Even worse than the act was that reaction. And going on, as poisoned as the killers must have been by mind-rotting hatred, those who stood and publicly praised such a grotesque spilling of blood are just as sickening. It is their adulation of murders that allows the murder to continue, the refusal to shun brutality that enables the brutal to act in their name. Now, Habas had something to say about it. He issued a statement in solidarity with the demons whose demonstrations sent the message, Jews were chopped to pieces in a temple. Fabulous. Oh, I can't believe that that came out of his mouth. Can you? Fabulous. Jack, once again, the hatred of the Jew has been shown, not only through, through the Palestinians, but through many other areas, too. Rexella, I admire Nolan Finley. This man has guts. This is the Detroit news that goes to Dearborn, the largest concentration of Muslims in all America, and he's constantly speaking up, and I thank him for it. They not only have killed the Jews, but according to the World Christian Encyclopedia, they have murdered 45 million Christians in the last 100 years. But you know what? The judgment day is coming. You're not going to get away with it. The Father God, Yahweh, loves his son, Jesus, and says in John 5, 22, the Father hath given all authority to Jesus to do the judging. 
Acts 17, 31, God hath appointed the day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. And who is he? The one that rose from the dead, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. But Jesus is going to be sitting on the throne in the great morning of judgment recorded in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And guess what they're doing then? They're chopping everyone to pieces then too. The Muslims. I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. Now, here is what happens in verses 11 to 15. This is serious. I saw a great white throne and he that sat on it, before whose face the heavens and the earth passed away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. Every man was judged according to his works. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, again, according to his works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You're going to pay for your sins, you murderers. Jack, how serious yeah. that is. Yeah. It is so very, very serious. And we're going to talk about uh, what the Bible teaches about uh, killing and why the Bible teaches just the opposite. But do you remember, not too long ago, I gave you uh, something about Governor Mike Huckabee. He made a very accurate statement about uh, the Quran and Islam, and then he was misquoted. Oh, there you see him. He was misquoted by someone in the Dallas Morning News. Let's go on to what the gentleman had to say about his quotation, Religion of Peace. Going on here, according to former Governor Mike Huckabee, Islam promotes murderous mayhem and rioting on its holiest days. Now, here's what he had to say about what the governor said. If Governor Huckabee picked up a Quran, he would have found Allah loves not those who create disorder, 565, making clear that violence has no place in Islam. I urge Governor Huckabee to pick up a Quran and read it for himself, Amid Malik. Now, uh, my, oh, my, we're going to be looking at what the Quran has to say here. I'm going to put it on the screen and ask Jack if he will read it for you. This is what the Quran has to say. But I'm going to say something first. I'm at Malik. I have read the Quran through twice. I've memorized 300 of its verses. And you don't know what you're talking about. I know more than you do about your Quran. Now, here it is. Seize them and kill them, unbelievers, wherever you find them, Surah 489. If you encounter in war those who disbelieve, strike their necks, behead them, Surah 74. Give firmness to the believers, Muslims. I will instill terror into the hearts of the unbelievers, all non-Muslims. You smite them above their necks and smite all their fingertips off them, Surah 812. Strike terror into the hearts of the enemies of God and your enemies and others. Surah 860. When the sacred months are over, slay the idolaters wherever you find them. Arrest them, besiege them, lay an ambush everywhere for them. Surah 95. Believers, make war on the infidels who dwell around you. Deal firmly with them. Surah 9123. When you encounter the infidels, strike off their heads. Surah 47.4. And Rexella. Yeah. I have read the Quran and 273 times it talks about killing. This guy right now in Iraq that's killing him right and left and says, we're coming to America, we're going to kill you and Canada. Listen, 164 times they talk about holy jihad, war, kill, let's go to America, let's hit all the nations of the world. And we're going to control the world before we're finished. No matter how many of we have to kill. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you what's wrong with all of this. 273 times. There are two sets of codes. The Sharia law and the Ten Commandments. What a difference. 
Sharia law says, thou shalt. The Ten Commandments say, thou shalt not. What does Sharia law say? Thou shalt kill all daughters who have premarital sex. Thou shalt kill all homosexuals when we take over. Thou shalt kill all apostates. That's our own crowd. If they say one word against Muhammad or the Quran. And thou shalt kill all infidels. That's anyone in every other religion who will not convert and become a Muslim. As they cried in so many cities recently, convert or die. Now, let's look at the Ten Commandments. First of all, I love Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God means what he says. It's God. And his name is Yahweh. And his son's name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is God too, yes. Second, remember the Trinity. Christ came who is over all God, blessed forever, Romans 9, 5. Great is the mystery of Godless that God was manifest in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3, 16. We believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the true God in eternal life, 1 John 5, 20. Now, let's think of the rest of the commandments there, beginning with chapter 20, verses 13. To 17. The others were, thou shalt, thou shalt now. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie, bear false witness, and thou shalt not covet. This guy right now, Baghdadi, as he goes into the places, breaks every one of those commandments. And Rick Sala, that's not God's suggestions, that's God's commandments in his holy word. Absolutely. The Ten Commandments, not Ten Suggestions. I like that, Jack. And we're going to be talking about the Bible in just a moment. But could I just say this first? All of this points to something that is going to happen. The coming of the Lord. Jesus said before he ascended into heaven that we would see some of these things happening. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But we need to be ready for the coming of the Lord, don't we? And if we ever need the Bible, yes, we need it now. And that is our wonderful new offer for the week. And as Christmas is around the corner, think about it. Take a look, please, at the commercial. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanopee Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanopee Ministries. Dr. Vanopee has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanopee Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanopee used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed, Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. How oh, very, very true any occasion is, as I mentioned a moment ago, Christmas is just around the corner. I can't believe it, but it is. And uh, with your order, we're going to be sending you something very, very special that Jack has developed. Jack, you want to say a and word? And this is a gift that goes with it. I wish I'd done it years ago. Not only do you find the 10,385 coded verses, but now I got a booklet to tell you exactly where to turn. You'd have to read the whole thing to find these before. Now just turn and it tells you where each one is found. It's a gift. Ooh, yes. So makes a call. There's the 800 number and there's the address. Call us. You want to have this for a loved one. Maybe a birthday's coming up even before Christmas. Great gift. And of course, as Jack mentioned, this is a wonderful, convenient guide to help you see all the prophecy verses in the Bible. How great it is. So beautiful. Jack Van Impey prophecy Bible. Make that call right away. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Now, friends, you know, something just happened in Washington. Unprecedented. And truly, it does reveal where many are trying to go right now. Washington National Cathedral to hold Friday Muslim prayers. Whoa. Now, I'm going to put on the screen here, Jack, something that would you please read 
what that is on November 14th, 2014. It happened. The biggest compromise in Christianity ever. November 14, 2014, prayer carpets have been laid out under the soaring arches of the Washington National Cathedral for an unprecedented Muslim worship service in one of America's best known churches. The carpets have been arrayed and arranged diagonally in the transept to the side of the sanctuary so that worshipers can face in the direction of Mecca without seeing crosses or Christian icons. Muslims are not supposed to pray in view of a sacred symbol which is alien to their faith. God forgive this compromise. Bishop Spung, who is a member of the Episcopal Church, goes from one end of America and Canada to the other. Special nights where he tears the Word of God apart, tears the virgin birth, mocks the crucifixion of Christ and all the rest. Thank God there's some great Episcopal ministers still. But this guy, these two at this place, and this is where many of our congressmen go, God forgive them. It's terrible what they've done, and I'm going to show you why. All right, Jack, I do have a question about that. How can two religions believing in different gods pray together at the same time? Well, I don't know if these clergymen, Christians, know that there's only one God. If they knew their first commandment, they'd have it right. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Deuteronomy 11, 26 and 27, God says, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, but you've gone after other gods, and you've done wrong. Well, you know, Jack, the Bible says pray in the name of Jesus. As Christians, we pray in the name of Jesus. Now, they don't even believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I'm going to put uh, the surahs on the screen, and Jack will deliver them to us from the Quran. The Quran anathematizes, curses, and damns anyone daring to say that Jesus is the Son of God. When they do, it is guaranteed that they will go to hell. And this can be found in the following surahs of the Quran. Surah 4, 165. Surah 5, 18. Surah 6, 101. Surah 930, Surah 17111, uh, Surah 1938, Surah 2391, and Surah 8892. And let me go a little farther. What they say about Jesus is the worst blasphemy, and I'm so tired of the Muslims crying out, What's wrong with you Christians? We love Jesus. He's our prophet. Isa. Wait a minute. And I'm going to give you the surahs in a moment. First of all, they say, and I'm going to have Jesus say in his words, I'm not a deity. I'm not the Son of God. I did not die on a cross. I rigged it all. I've become a Muslim since I left. I've converted. I've turned against Christianity. I've returned to smash all the crosses. And it is my job under Mukti, the Messiah of Islam, to put to death every Jew and Christian who will not convert. Jesus, a murderer? Yes. Where? Surah, chapter 4, verses 157 to 59, and verses 172 and 73, chapter 5, verses 72, 73, chapter 6, verse 19, and chapter 9, verse 30, and then chapter 19, verses 33 and 88. And let me say something to you ministers there at the Washington National Cathedral, you don't know your Bibles. What a shame that they have their backs to the cross of Jesus because they hate the cross and it'll hinder their prayers. And they look to Mecca and there's a problem there too because now the Shiites are going to separate and they're going to split. And though they've been bowing to Mecca for 1400 years, the Shiites say, we're changing it to Karbola. Bloodshed is coming. And you guys are pushing this thing because you say there's so much hatred and prejudice? Wait a minute, what about the tens of thousands that have just been slaughtered in all these countries? How we just, oh, you killed all these Christians, and 
we have a heart of forgiveness? No. A Bible says in Ephesians 4, 26, be you angry and sin not, and I am angry because of what's going on and because you Christian ministers are making a mockery of Christ and the Holy Bible. Now, what are we to do about it? The Bible says in Romans 16, 17, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine of Christ and avoid them. And I'm challenging all you Christian compromising ministers across America and even the world because I'm preaching to the whole world. Second John chapter 1 verses 9 to 11. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not the Father. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine of Christ being God's Son, receive him not into your house, let alone your church. There's more. Neither bid him God speed. Say God bless you to him. For he that Bids him Godspeed, is partaker of his evil deeds. God forgive you, men. Oh, my, oh, my, that is so serious, isn't it? Aren't you glad you know who Jesus really is? He's really the Son of God, the Savior of the world. How wonderful it is to put your faith in him. Will you do that right now? Will you open your heart to him? Jack, would you pray that wonderful prayer of forgiveness? Oh, I love Jesus, and I hate when men make a mockery of him and cover him up like Georgetown University, turn their backs on him. It's just happened. Jesus, we love you. Pray it after me. You're the way of eternal life and salvation. I'm asking you today to come into my heart. I want you to be my Savior. I believe you're the true Christ. Jesus, be mine today. Pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. I trust that you prayed that prayer. You just became a son or daughter of the Lord. Now, there's my address. I'll send you this little booklet if you write to me. First steps in a new direction, please. Let me hear from you that you opened your heart to Jesus. Now, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our wonderful offer of the week. Chuck? Thank you, Rex Ella, my friend, to order the Jack Vanapie Prophecy Bible. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free, 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA 6Y1. Now back to Rex Ella. Friends, don't put it off. You need to have this in your home. There's the 800 number, there's the address, and my gift with your order, so don't put it off. Make the call right away. I want to leave you with this thought. When you look out, it might look like night. When you look up, it's always light. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. My, oh, my, I'm going to ask Jack. He certainly paid for it. Ism does not fit in with Western civilization. This perceptive insight is something that Europe is just beginning to realize, and America yet to find out. Ism's propensity to live by the power of the sword must be moderated. And the Pope was certainly very, very good in, in seeing that ahead of time. But, Jack, he was right, and he's paying for it right now, isn't he? Pope Benedict XVI has a fatwa on him by the Muslims to kill him. And that's why he's in a little monastery now in Rome. And he's promised not to say anything because this new pope has gone the opposite direction. They're not going to put a fatwa on him because they said, and I can document this, and I will in a couple weeks from now, thoroughly, if you will get on your podium and say to the world, we are a religion of peace, 
will be kind to you, will stand behind you, and he did it. God forgive From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. There are some things that we are going to be sharing with you today that are absolutely heart-moving and boggles my mind. This first one, Jerusalem attack shakes Israel. I could not believe what they did in Israel. I'll talk about it at length. And then cheers for synagogue killing can't be forgotten. Oh, not only did they do something horrific, but people cheered about it. And then going on, Washington National Cathedral to hold Friday Muslim prayers. My word, it's in a Christian cathedral, and certainly Jack will have. You'll see why as we progress. Jack, you know, there's something that really, really puzzles me. I know you must be puzzled. Why? Why is the Jews so hated? I can't figure it out, and yet I'm sure the Bible reveals very, very much along that line. What does the Bible say about the hatred for the Jew? First of all, Jesus predicted this would be so in Matthew 24, verse 9. He said to the Jews, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And 1 Chronicles 21, 1 says, Satan, that old slimy serpent, stood against Israel. Anytime they're hated, it's because of Satan's crowd. And I'm sorry for what these men suffered. And it's sad how the people rejoiced and just danced around the streets because these four rabbis were murdered and put to death. We're going to have more to say about that in a minute, Rexel. Yes, Jack, certainly. But something else that really puzzles me. You know, you can be hated. And uh, our hearts were so saddened and sorrowful to learn about the vicious attack which took place in Israel. It's something I think you'll agree with. I'll never, never forget. Uh, take a look, please. Here you see something, Islam rising, the never-ending jihad against the Jews and Israel. Jerusalem attack shakes Israel. Five die in Palestinian assault on the synagogues. Oh, my. And then U.S. rabbis killed in the attacks, of course. The two Palestinians with a gun and axe went in, and they performed this terrible act. U.S. rabbis among five dead in the attack. There you see they're carrying them. And then jihad in Jerusalem. The Palestinians can't murder their way to a self-governing state. And uh, here you see someone, Pope Benedict the uh, 16th. And he had something to say about Islam and a lot to say about that too. But before we get into the program today, we've been reminiscing a little bit at home about some of the wonderful things that we have experienced. And uh, I couldn't help but think about uh, one of the huge rallies that we had. And uh, I love children. They would come up so freely, you know, are you Rexella? And I say, yes, I am, honey. This one little girl I brought to Jack's attention this week said, uh, are you Rexella? And I said, yes, honey, I am. She said, where's your daddy? Oh, <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> oh, brother. Okay, I'm going to let you have it now, right. honey. Oh, I've been in the ministry for many, many years, and you'll wonder why I look so good. It's because she, my sweetheart, gives me a lot of loving care. And ladies, <laughs> she looks so good because I buy her a lot of loving care. Explain that one to your husband, will you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm awfully glad. It's something that I can purchase. <laughs> well, you know, friends are hearts. I'm going to get back to the headline. <laughs> 